Video game soundtracks have the really delicate job of being something you can listen to on its own and have it make sense, while at the same time heightening the effects of what you're playing on your controller and what's showing up on screen. The really successful ones do just fine on their own, but what makes the soundtrack truly excellent is when it augments what is happening on screen. It raises the experience up a notch for having been there. Let's have some fun with Ori and the Blind Forest. Here is just a snippet of some gameplay with the actual music from the game. See how it fits? It's got an air of mystery to it as the player traverses the terrain and encounters puzzles and enemies. The colors on screen are rich, full of color and life, and the music reflects this vibrancy. Utilizing a full orchestral setup and its range of tones to set the mood of what we experience. Now let's rewind a bit and remove the game audio. Let's put something else in there. Um, how about some uh, some Duke Ellington? Doesn't work as well, does it? It doesn't fit with the overall scheme of the level design, the art direction. It feels inappropriate and actively detracts from the experience, but this is unfair. Duke Ellington wasn't a video game composer. Let's go with something else then. Uh, uh, how about this one? God of War isn't much better. Even though we have used another video game soundtrack, it just doesn't quite fit. It doesn't match any of the aesthetics that Ori employs. This is all hyperbole, of course, but I'm trying to make a point. Game composers have a very tough job. They need to look at what is going on from the programming side, the art direction, and the story to create convincing pieces that work well with all the other puzzle pieces when put together. But now, let, let's take a look at a couple of more practical examples. Welcome to the Arkham Library. History is so important. And it's been here. Take a look at this clip from Arkham Asylum. This track picks up any time Batman engages with a random mob of enemies. Note the fast rhythm, the punctuations used in percussion and strings. This isn't just a neat little piece of music for the sake of being cool, it is reflective of the style of combat used in all the Arkham games. Combat requires careful timing and awareness, utilizing both visual cues and rhythmic button presses to create combat flow and get better attacks in and bonus experience points. Now we're in Final Fantasy VII, leaving Midgar for the first time. This is the first time we've left the city and are confronted with the overworld map. The track that plays is simple in structure, but perfectly encapsulates that feeling of first encountering the world. The theme starts on scale degree 1, or Do, and carefully creeps up two more steps before leaping high up to scale degree 7, or T finding a comfortable resting spot just down a single step. This fits our emotions perfectly. Being confined to a single city forced to walk in a limited amount of space. But suddenly and unexpectedly, it opens up, representing our jump to T in almost an exaggerated state of euphoria. The theme repeats, but this time it's tempered back and more determined, represented by a series of chord movements that shake us of the arm and bring us right back to our first note, our Do. My last submission is an example of terrible music design. Uh, horror music needs to be tense. It needs to take a person's innate fears and use audio cues to pull at the mind and draw them further into madness. Unfortunately, in the director's cut of Resident Evil, that sadly does not happen. In the mansion basement, you hear this sad amalgamation of trombone tones. 
It is supposed to represent the dissonant clash of strings that you would often hear in, in more famous movies like Psycho, but all it does is sound like a toddler needlessly pressing at keys on the composer's keyboard. It does nothing to heighten tension of this seminal survival horror game, and certainly cannot be listened to on its own. So, when you listen to the music behind the game, don't try and rate it on an arbitrary score level. A number would not really reflect an artistic work, and demeans the effort that was put into it, if at all. Try looking at it from two viewpoints. Do I want to listen to this on its own? And what does it do for the overall game?